Hello to everyone. Um, thanks for joining. It's Jonathan Curio. Uh, I work at uh, the University Heart Center in Cologne, Germany. And today we are reporting for PCR Online live from ACC 2025. And for this, it is my great pleasure to be joined by Dr. Raj Makar, who leads the interventional service at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Thank you very much for joining, Dr. Makar. Pleasure, Jonathan. So at this year's meeting, you presented the Align AR trial, the echocardiographic and clinical outcomes of the first 500 patients um, treated with the Trilogy system. Maybe you could briefly explain to us how this system works for aortic regurgitation and then how this trial was designed that you presented at this year's meeting. Sure. So Jonathan, as you know, untreated symptomatic aortic regurgitation carries bad prognosis for our patients, especially if they are class three or class four. Um, and a uh, lot of patients are untreated, which is what led to the use of off-label devices, which are uh, plagued by high rates of valve embolization and residual aortic regurgitation. So there was really an unmet need in for these patients for aortic regurgitation, and a Jena valve trilogy system essentially is a dedicated device that has three locators that essentially clip onto the native leaflets um, and form a seal as well as provide additional anchoring onto the leaflets uh, uh, in addition to the the anchoring that would occur in the annulus. So this is uh, this this is actually a device specifically designed for aortic regurgitation, though it has also been used for aortic stenosis. So how was the trial design that you now uh, presented at this meeting, testing this yes. device? So the Align AR study was, um, a, you know, assessing patients who were at high risk for surgery, had at least three plus aortic regurgitation. And all of these patients uh, were evaluated by the heart team and subject selection committees. So the bar was reasonably high to get into the clinical trial. Uh, and we enrolled 500 patients. And the goal there was to look at the composite primary safety endpoint at 30 days, as well as an efficacy endpoint at one year, which was all-cause mortality. And there were performance goals. And, um, you know, what we were able to show is that both for primary safety endpoint, which was a composite of number of things, including uh, death and stroke and kidney injury and vascular complications and pacemaker implantations, as well as more than moderate residual aortic regurgitation, we met the uh, pre-specified goal and uh, this endpoint uh, occurred about 26% of the times, mostly driven by pacemaker requirement. Um, and this was, you know, this was good because it actually, the p-values were very, very significant. Similarly, for one-year mortality, which occurred in 8.5% of the patients, this was dramatically lower than what was expected by review of literature in the past, uh, where the mortality was expected to be as high as 25%. So we, we met those pre-specified goals and endpoints. Uh, importantly, uh, what we also did was, uh, we, and if you look at the device success, uh, it was very high. If you look at mortality, overall mortality in these patients was actually 1.6%. Uh, and that is one third of what you would actually expect, uh, roughly one third, because the STS score uh, in the patients that were enrolled was 3.9. So I think uh, usually, when we do TAVR for aortic regurgitation, the observed mortality is generally more than the STS mortality using off-label devices. And with this device, it, it truly actually made an impact with low rates of uh, valve embolization, which was only 1.6% compared to 10 to 15% with the off-label devices. Um, we also uh, observed uh, excellent hemodynamics of the valve, uh, which were actually durable all the way up to uh, two years with very favorable uh, remodeling. The gradients were actually very low uh, in low single digits, around four millimeters of mercury. So, uh, you know, the, the valve performance was uh, excellent. We also looked at patient reported outcomes. So the KCCQ scores actually improved by an average of 20 points at one year and two year compared to baseline. And at one and two years, 90% uh, of the patients were in functional NYHA class one and two uh, compared to at baseline where two thirds of the patients were actually class three or class four. So there was a significant impact on functional status and patient reported outcomes as well. 
seemed like great results and very promising for these patients where, as you said, there were no real options before. So maybe just very briefly as an, as an outlook from like an expert uh, as, as you are, what do you think does this mean as next steps for this device and maybe also for, in general, this field of treating AR by means of Tavern? So uh, I think what uh, our analysis from 500 patients shows is very reassuring evidence of device safety as well as efficacy at one year and also at two years. In fact, you, we, we see uh, these good benefits actually last. So I would hope that the FDA will actually approve the device in the United States. We know that it is available in Europe, but uh, this will hopefully lead to the approval of this device in the United States, which will be a great thing for patients who do not have uh, very good options, especially when they're actually high surgical risk. In addition, I think these data are reassuring and give us confidence to actually do a, a randomized clinical trial in patients who are actually not high risk, who are actually low risk patients. So I think, should this device be used in everybody? Uh, and, and I think that question will be answered by the artist trial, which is actually now approved by the FDA to start enrolling. Uh, and hopefully almost a thousand patients that will randomize patients, you know, to this device compared to uh, open surgery. And that would be an interesting study to do. And the outcomes will be very, very important. Thank you. That really sounds like a, a space to watch and with some very interesting and also um, helpful findings uh, coming up in the next few years. With this, I really want to thank you again for, for joining us to share with us your findings from this year's uh, ACC meeting. I want to uh, thank all the viewers um, to join us here at PCR Online and uh, continue to follow the coverage um, at uh, PCR Online. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan.